Uh, my name is Hiroki Tezuka. Uh, today I'd like to talk about the EPR study of bone in silicon. Uh, this work is collaborated by Andrew Stige, Till and Lauer, Alexei Tristin, Sean Shankar, and Professor Steve Lyon, Professor Martin Brandt, and Professor Koheito. Now, introduction. Uh, electron paramagnetic resonance, or EPL, is one of the most powerful tools for the investigation of various kinds of defects in semiconductors. However, it is known that the detection of EPL signals from acceptor bound holes is very difficult. Uh, this is due to the high sensitivity to any symmetry breaking perturbations. Here, please look at this figure. Uh, this figure is a schematic diagram of a valence band edge of silicon. Uh, left figure is unstressed silicon, and right figure is externally stressed silicon. So, applying uh, externally stress, the valence band edge splits into two different bands. And this band is called as heavy hole band and light hole band. Uh, this splitting is induced uh, even by very tiny strain field. Now, our uh, actual sample, there exists a lot of point defects or dislocations. So this means that uh, every acceptors feel a slightly different uh, strain field by one by one. As a result, the EPR signals from acceptor bound holes uh, is a strongly inhomogeneously building. Uh, this is why uh, the observation of the EPR signal from acceptor bound holes uh, have not been observed for a long time. The first observation is reported by Newbrand, finally in 1978, when the crystal grossing technique was improved enough to make a single crystal with very high crystal perfection. Here, you can see the overview of EPR spectrum measured by uh, Newbrand with natural silicon sample. So you can see totally six transition lines uh, corresponding to each splitting in the Boron's four-level system. So he has uh, successfully observed uh, all of the resonance uh, signal from this sample. However, he also reported that uh, there remains uh, several mysteries uh, with this sample. And uh, these mysteries have not cleared for more than 30 years. So the purpose of my research is to clarify those questions from uh, experimental and theoretical approaches. Today, I will give you two topics uh, about these uh, mysteries. Uh, this is the first topic. The title is The Origin of the Residual Gaussian Broadening in Intersolvent EPR from Boron in Silicon. In the first report written by uh, Newbrand, he also performed a detailed line shape analysis. Uh, this is one of the intersolvent resonance spectra uh, measured with bone doped floating zone grown dislocation free very pure natural silicon sample. In this figure, a solid line is a experimental data and open square and open circle is a numerical fitting curve of Laurentian line and Gaussian line. And this figure shows the angular dependence of the total line width of this transition spectrum. Uh, in this figure, uh, x-axis is, indicates the angle between magnetic field and crystal axis. And black dot is the actual experimental data. And solid line is a deconvoluted Laurentian contribution by forked uh, fitting. 
As you can see, experimental data cannot be fitted by uh, neither by Laurentian nor Gaussian, like this. And you can see large Gaussian contribution in all directions. Moreover, he also reported that even if we change the point effect concentration, the magnitude of this Gaussian contribution does not change. So this result indicates that so there still remains any inhomogeneity in na very pure natural silicon sample. Uh, to clarify the source of inhomogeneity, uh, several previous work were performed. However, still now, no one can explain uh, this origin, still now. So what is the actual origin of the residual broadening? To think about this question, uh, we found a uh, similar phenomena uh, in the field of uh, photoluminescence study. The effect is called as ground state splitting due to host isotopes. Uh, you, uh, as you know, uh, natural silicon is composed of three stable isotopes, 28 silicon, 29 silicon, and 30 silicon. Uh, this figure is a photoluminescence uh, spectrum measured with aluminum doped silicon. And whose host material is natural silicon in upper spectrum and pure 20 silicon in lower spectrum. So you can see the clear disappearance of the doublet by isotopically purification. Uh, this fact uh, implies that uh, different isotopes have different band gap energy. And uh, in addition to this experimental result, uh, with the uh, considering of uh, various experiments, it was revealed that the valence band edge is actually shifted uh, depending on atomic mass, like this. And it is uh, reflecting the difference in phonon frequency of zero point oscillation. And the absolute value was determined like this. Uh, we thought that the EPR measurement also should be affected by this splitting. And to confirm the isotope shift, we prepared two kinds of sample. First sample is natural silicon sample, and the other is boron doped uh, isotopically highly preferred 20 silicon sample. And to measure the uh, EPR spectrum, we employed uh, Bruca's expand CW ESR spectrometer. Uh, this is an experimental result. In this figure, upper spectrum is measured by 20 silicon sample, and lower spectrum is measured by natural silicon sample. And blue dotted line is a numerical fitting line uh, composed of pure Laurentian curve. So from this spectrum, you can see the clear reduction of line widths, like this. And in addition, by isotopical purification, all spectrum can be fitted by complete uh, Laurentian curve, like this. So from this result, we concluded that the source of uh, Gaussian broadening was the isotopes. And as a next step, we try to develop a theoretical model to explain this broadening. The basic idea was firstly reported by Karai Skaj and his co-workers. So first of all, we prepared a lot of lattice point in the real space like this. And we calculated the spatial wave function of acceptor bonded holds by solving a Schrodinger equation. 
with a uh, Hamiltonian of uh, Zeeman term and with Zeeman term, but without uh, isotopic perturbation Hamiltonian. And then we distribute uh, three different isotopes on each lattices, one by one, like this. And now we have the local shifting, uh, local ground state shifting on each lattice point, like this. And also, we have the local existing probability on each lattice point, like this. And then, we calculated the perturbation, isotopic perturbation Hamiltonian. We assumed, there we assumed, the total uh, ground state shifting can be obtained by the integration of local uh, as a product of local shifting and local uh, existing probabilities as written as follows. And after that, we repeat this whole procedure uh, more than 20,000 times to obtain the energy distribution as an ensemble. Uh, this is a uh, specific calculation condition. So we've employed six band KP theory, including spin orbit coupling by next nano simulation codes. And because uh, we wanted to see the EPR, uh, the distribution of the shifting energy as an EPR format. So we performed the computation of the tran transition energy distribution and single spin packets. And as a single spin packet, we assumed one of the narrow, narrowest uh, EPR line measured by isotopically preferred 20 silicon sample. Uh, this is the calculation result. Uh, rest figure is a calculated uh, transition energy distribution of delta m equal 1 in the savant transition. And by using this spectrum, uh, we, converting, we converted with a single spin packet. And we have successfully observed uh, EPR spectrum like this. Uh, black solid line is the experimental data, and red line is the calculated data. So you can see very good agreement with experimental data and theoretical calculation. Moreover, uh, this asymmetric line is also fitted very well. Uh, we found that this asymmetry is induced by the off-diagonal element or a quantum mixing effect of uh, isotopically perturbation Hamiltonian. So from this result, we have concluded that the actual source of the residual Gaussian broadening is the isotope-induced uh, ground state splitting. Now let me summarize my presentation. First, a random distribution of host isotopes induces acceptor ground state energy shift. And then, uh, the residual inhomogeneous broadening is caused by the uh, isotope-induced ground state splitting. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>